that was one of his firm beliefs is that his life was always a process, a process of maturing, a process of learning, never arriving and staying at one point. He was mm -hmm. always growing, examining his life and finding what worked best for him, his yeah. own way. It's funny though, as a human being though, Shannon, I mean, you always have that expectation that at some point you'll reach the aha moment, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. I got it, I nailed it, finally. Yeah. Everybody thinks, if only I could do yeah. this, then I'll be there, but. It's amazing to see yeah. someone who, who everyone understands was brilliant, yeah. right? And, and yet never being satisfied with, with where he was, always yearning to do a little bit more. And always pushing the envelope, always going to the next Had place. you watched these interviews before? I mean, not the, not the people, but like the Pierre Burton interview and, and a lot of that. Yes, I was four when my father passed away. Um, I had seen the Pierre Burton interview and I, and I really love it and cherish it. I think it's such a masterful you know, interview yeah. with him. But um, you know, I, my own memories of him are very subtle, sort of glimpses, you know, more about just sort of the feeling of the time and, yeah. and all that sort of thing. So it's really, I'm very lucky and fortunate that all of this material exists. His, and even that he left behind so many notes and thoughts on his mm -hmm. own process that I feel like Never he can- Never mind all his work that we see in film yeah. right. as well. But the exactly, library full yeah. of annotated and uh, you know, books right. with now notes. Now we have, we yeah. talked about Pierre, the Pierre Burton interview, but we haven't talked about the people who were interviewed in the documentary. Yes. I mean, we're seeing wow. some of the world's best mm. athletes. I had never, course being a girl typical girl <laughs> put the connection together to MMA and 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 mm. you know really how much of a pioneer he was in the sports that we see today yes. what uh, why did you choose the people that you did to interview the subjects in in the movie yeah well certainly with MMA we really wanted to get the, that point of view because um, you know there is a correlation between what my father was doing and what's happening now with the UFC and all those wonderful things so we wanted people to understand that and then also you know it's wonderful that people like Kobe Bryant and Paul <laughs> Rodriguez who's a professional skateboarder yeah. are so influenced because my father mm -hmm really when he was talking about his philosophy, it was more about the philosophy of movement, mm -hmm. more than, and how to live your life. And he applied that to martial arts, but it can be applied to anything, yeah. is what mm -hmm. we're learning. He was a good dancer. Yes. Oh, he was amazing. <laughs> and a handsome devil. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. He was. He, as you know, he was the cha-cha champion of Hong Kong. Yeah. And he carried in his wallet a little note card that had listed 108 different cha-cha steps. You're kidding me. So, no. yeah, and they go and break it down. I mean, the whole thing is so beautiful, Linda, but, I, you know, I can't help because, you know, there's a very similar situation in my family. I was talking to you guys about it before. My father passed away the mm. same year. I was the same age as Shannon was. And um, has it been a struggle for you, Linda? I mean, over the years, because people obviously want to talk about this man, this legend, this brilliant human being. You know, it's been an evolution, I must say, because when Bruce died in 1973, his latest film, the Enter the Dragon, had not even been released. Yeah. So he was a big star in Hong Kong, but the world didn't know about him. Mm -hmm. And then when the movie was released and it was very well received and popular, None of us, nobody knew that it was going to still be alive f almost 40 years later. No kidding. <laughs> yeah. And in the cult film yes. book that we, you, you know, we see Bruce's movies. Which, right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And uh, so the evolution of people getting to know Bruce has been the most interesting thing over all these decades. Because at first people would just think of him as a martial artist mm -hmm. or an actor or even just a guy who c had stunt doubles and everything, you know, right. they didn't know he was the <laughs> real thing, you know. <laughs> and so the unfolding of his entire personality, right. his depth has been very yeah. rewarding to us. And, and this film really exhibits that. And the other thing is, uh, being that it's done by the family, you address the mystery of his death, put it to rest, this is what happened, there mm -hmm. you go. And people can watch the movie to hear it straight uh, straight from the family, yes. which right. I think is very That's nice. Right. You guys, yeah. thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank uh, you. Uh, and congratulations yeah. on all the great work that you do. The Bruce Lee Foundation, of course, carries on his philosophy and his legacy, uh, mm -hmm. working on a museum right now. and that's We are, yes, the close. Bruce Lee Action Museum in the Seattle, Washington area. Really so. close to us, so people yeah, can yes, drive. Drive. Yes. visit. Yeah, you awesome. You have to see this, uh, this documentary. It is an absolutely amazing tribute to Bruce Lee. It's called I Am Bruce Lee and it will screen at Cineplex Theatres March 8th and 17th right across Canada. If you want to check it out, you can also go to the website to find out more information about where the film will screen near you. Very nice. We're going to take a break.